Welcome to Investigation 2.3, Solving Systems by, by combi Combining Equations. I can't talk today. I'm sorry, guys. So in this investigation, we are going to be looking at essentially combining equations, essentially adding or subtracting equations together to eliminate one of our variables so we can solve for the other one and then figuring out what the other, what the initial variable was that we eliminated in the first place. So essentially, we're going to be going something like this. We'd have an equation like x and y is equal to 1 and 2x plus y is equal to 2. Uh, yeah, 2. And then we would essentially subtract these equations so that our y's disappear and we just have x's that we have to deal with and so on. So we're going to be playing around with that sort of idea. So let's get started. We have this situation where we have 2x minus y is equal to 4 and xy is equal to 5. So if we have 2x minus y is equal to 4 and x plus y is equal to 5, then we can essentially say, well, let's put these two equations together. The reason why we can do that is we are looking to eliminate with combining these two equations, eliminate one of these variables. And if I notice here, I have a negative y and a positive y. So if I were to combine these equations and add the equations together, those y variables will turn to zero. Negative y plus a positive y equals zero y. So all I would be left with is x's and I can solve for x and then after that I can put um, that information back into one of the two equations and figure out what y is. One thing about equations, if you need to have the same number of equations to be able to solve for that many number of variables. So if I have two variables in my equations, in this case x and y, if I have two variables, that means I need two equations to be able to solve for those two variables. If I have three variables, I need to have at least three equations to be able to solve for those two or for those three variables. If I have one variable, I just need one equation. So for example, if I have 3x is equal to 6, all I need is that 3x is equal to 6 because I can figure out that x is 2 and we're fine. But we need to have the same number of equations as we have variables. So in this case, we have x and y. And one way that we can solve it is through a process of combination. So let's say I have 2x minus y and I'm adding it to this equation where I have then 2x minus y plus x plus y is equal to 4 plus 5. Notice that I've taken every bit from my first equation and stuck it in and every bit from my second equation and stuck it in to the, my original or to this new equation, this combined equation. From there we need to add things together, add like terms. So 2x plus an x will get me 3x and negative y plus a positive y will get me 0y's. And then after that I get is that all of that is equal to 4 plus 5 which is 9. From there I have 3x is equal to 9 and I can continue to solve this so I can divide by 3 on each side and I'll get simply x is equal to 3. So am I finished? Yay! I have half of it done in all reality. So this is one half done. We're halfway there. After I have x is equal to something, I need to use one of these two original equations that we had before, 2x minus y is equal to 4, or x plus y is equal to 5, and use that to solve for y. Because each one of these solutions, if I have two linear equations, that tells me that I have a spot where they both meet on a graph. So we have a graph of x versus y. I did that horribly. I should not do it like that. Sorry. I have a graph that is x versus y, and I potentially have two equations, and I want those two equations to intersect. So where they intersect is a point. So I have half the point. I have the x-coordinate. It goes over 3. Now I need to find that y-coordinate that corresponds to it. So I'm going to look at my two equations, and I'm going to decide which one I want to put my x into. 
If I look at my first equation, I can see that the first equation is a little more complicated than my second equation. So make your life easy and choose whichever equation looks like less work. So if I were to say my x is equal to 3 and use the second equation, we'd have 3 plus y is equal to 5. And I'd just subtract 3 on each side and I'd get y is equal to 2. So there's my second half. This is my coordinate pair. If I were to actually write this out, I'd have 3, 2 is where these two lines intersect. That is our solution. This coordinate pair, 3, 2, if I were to put it into one of these two equations, will be a true statement. doesn't matter which equation, it'll work in both of them. So there's two methods to our process. We can do two different things for combining. And I'm also going to call this elimination. So be aware of that. Here, let me write that down. We can say that we are either combining these two equations or eliminating. The reason why we can say both is combining means we're going to be putting the two equations together both the x and y terms and their solution and the equal side, but then we're also eliminating because we're trying to get rid of one of our variables. And in order to get rid of one of our variables, we may need to add or subtract when we're combining. So getting to that part, let's look at these two methods. I would suggest writing these notes down, or writing down these two methods. This first, um, set of equations, this first systems of equations, I see I have a negative x plus 4y is equal to 2, and I have x plus 2y is equal to 5. So I'm going to solve these, but I'm going to pick a specific method to solving them. If I look at this, I can see that my x's are exact opposites of each other. I have a negative x and a positive x. Because of that, I can just add these two equations and those two, or that variable will disappear. It'll become 0x. So my method of madness for this one is addition. That is one of my methods to solving these two problems. So let's do just that. We're going to solve this. I'm going to also show you a vertical method when I do this. When we add, if we were to add 17 plus 21, we'd like to do it vertically because if I did it horizontally, I can't always see my ones digit versus my tens digit and I can't see how I need to maybe carry things. So I'm going to do this vertically so I can see everything sort of fall away. So I have negative x plus a positive x. So that will get me zero x's. My next term, I have 4y plus 2y, which will get me 6y. And then my last term, I have 2 plus 5, which is equal to 7. So after that, I just need to solve this. I need to finish this up and figure out what y is going to be equal to. My x's don't matter. They are 0 x's, so it's just 0. So I have 6y is equal to 7. And now I'm going to divide by 6 on both sides, and I get y is equal to 7 over 6. That's, again, I am half done. Half done here. Now I need to put this information back into one of my two equations and finish this up. If I look at my two equations and I look at my answer, 7 6, I can see that 7 6 isn't a pretty number, but I do like dealing with 7 6 and a 2 better than 7 6 and a 4. I don't want those 6 to get way out of hand. So I'm going to use this second equation, x plus 2y is equal to 5, and I'm going to put 7 6 in there. So I have x plus 2 times 7 over 6, which is equal to 5 and I'm going to solve this. If I look at this 2 and the 6, this 2 is essentially like a 2 over 1, so that means I can simplify a couple of things. 2 and 6, that'll become 3, so I get x plus 7 thirds is equal to 5, and I'm going to now subtract 7 thirds from both sides, and I'll get x is equal to 5 minus 7 thirds, or 15 thirds minus 7 thirds, which is 8 
thirds. So my answer for this particular problem is 8 thirds comma 7 sixths. And that's not a pretty answer, but real life isn't pretty all the time. So this particular set of equations using addition gets me this funky answer. I wouldn't necessarily want to use subtraction because I'm not going to eliminate any of my terms. So this is my one method that I'm going to use. This next one. If I look at this, I have 3y and 3y. And while that's fine and dandy, I can't add these two and have the y's disappear. So what I need to do is I need to subtract my equations. So I'm going to do this vertically again. Now your book doesn't necessarily have you doing things vertically, but I'm going to. 2x minus 5y gets me a negative 3. 2x minus 5x, or sorry, 2x minus 5x, I said 5y. And then I have 3y minus 3y, which is equal to 0y. And that is equal to 4 minus a negative 8. So 4 minus a negative 8 means 4 plus 8, or 12. So I get negative 3x is equal to 12 for my final work. 0y doesn't matter. It disappears. So I get negative 3. I'm going to divide by that. And I'll get x is equal to a negative 4. That's a pretty nice answer, and that's OK. I like that answer. So now I'm going to do a, a, one last little step. I need to take this x and put it into one of my two equations. I see one of my equations has a negative number and it don't like that. And I also notice that x is a little bigger and that's this equation, the 5x. That's a little bit much for me. So I'm going to choose this top equation this time. 2x plus 3y is equal to 4. Just simply because the 2 times the x isn't going to be as big and out of hand as it could potentially be. So 2 times a negative 4 plus 3y is equal to 4. So 2 times a negative 4 gets me a negative 8, plus 3y is equal to 4. I'm going to now add 8 to both sides. I get 3y is equal to 12, and I'm now going to divide by 3 on both sides. So I get y is equal to 4. So my final answer is negative 4, 4. Lots of work for a simple little problem. And these coordinates, yet again, they represent where um, these equations are meeting. Where are they, like, intersecting? One last little thing before we go on. We need to use also equivalent expressions to solve by combining or using elimination. So our very last thing is this problem. We have a system of equations, 3x plus 2y is equal to 10, and 4x minus y is equal to 6. And neither of these, if we were to just straight combine them right now, we wouldn't lose any of our x's or y's. And that's what we want. When we combine something, we need to like get a variable gone. One of those variables needs to leave. One thing I do notice, though, is that on my y terms, I have a positive and a negative. I have an addition and subtraction, essentially. So I'm going to use that to my advantage. What we can do is we can do what's called e dealing with equivalent expressions. So I can make this y term become 2y. The way I do that, I need to multiply by 2. So I'm going to multiply this whole equation by 2. I'm going to use an equivalent expression. So 2 times 4 will get me 8x. 2 times a negative y gets me a negative 2y. And that is equal to 2 times 6, which is 12. And I still have my original equation, 3x plus 2y equals 10 up above it. So now using an equivalent expression for my second answer here, which if we turned it into slope-intercept form, we'd end up with the exact same expression. It's equivalent. Now we can actually like combine these two and get one of these variables gone. One of them will disappear. So What's also nice is I can also add them, which is always sweet. It's always nice to add instead of subtract. So we get 3x plus 8x is equal to 11x. 3 plus 8 is equal to 11x. We have 2y plus 
negative 2y, which is equal to 0y, and that is equal to 10 plus 12, which is 22. So we get 11x is equal to 22. We're going to divide by 11 on both sides. You get x is equal to 2. From there, we can put one of this into one of our other expressions and find out what y is. And I'm going to actually use this second expression this time. Just because I, I know my x is bigger, but it's a single y term afterwards. There's not a 2y or anything, so I don't have to do additional like work, really. So I'm going to say I have 4 times 2. I'm going to make my 2 be orange like it was before. Minus y is equal to 6. 4 times 2 is 8, minus y is equal to 6, and now I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides, and I get negative y is equal to a negative 2, so that means a positive y is equal to a positive 2. So these are my coordinates, 2, 2. That's where this equation intersects. So play around with this investigation. Play around with the concept of combining or eliminating um, a variable within an equation to be able to find the answer in a systems of equations. And as always, if you have any questions, please ask. Thanks for watching.